Thanks, Abhay Sharma. They, he commented and said, let's do a little video about the sensors, GPS, and heart rate, stuff like that. So we're just going to do a quick video and put it together with regards to some of the GPS and sensor activity, and we'll go from there. Also, the GPRH 1000, great battery lifespan. We got it and picked it up on the 16th of March, as you're aware from the first video release. And we are 10 days later and I'm just getting my first notification for low battery. So, and I've been crushing it with all kinds of functions and features that we've been using over the last, you know, 10 days, including the trip to Montreal and all the rest of it. So yeah, it's great. It's doing just fine, doing what it's supposed to. Six fifteen in the morning. Check it. Check out that moon phase. Casio G Shock GPR H one thousand. It's got six sensors, GPS and Bluetooth technology. The barometer. Let's take a look. I was always taught that you know what? It's pretty basic. Look at the graph. The easiest way to tell if the graph is going down, poor weather is coming. If the graph is going up, well. You may have some sun. Ooh, look at this mess. All right, let's check it out and just confirm because it's raining here in Canada. It's miserable as F. Sorry, I shouldn't curse. I didn't, I just used F, it's okay. Thank goodness for the waterproof chuck. Don't leave home without them. All right, quite simply, the barometer measures the atmospheric pressure. So if the pressure is low, weather's crappy. The pressure is high, weather is good. All right, there's your barometer setting. Let's press enter. There you go. So your measuring is coming in at 978 hectopascals, I think it is. So millibars converts to hectopascals, and that's the registered measurement that they show on the G-Shock range man, GPR H1000. So as you can see, I told you the graph goes down. The graph's going down, and guess what? It's miserable as hell out here. It's raining, right? If that graph starts to go up, you're going to notice that the weather starts to get better. Now the temperature is also listed there and that's coming in at 22.8 degrees Celsius here in Canada. But that is not accurate. The best way to get that accuracy for your temperature is to take the watch off so it gets acclimated to the actual temperature outside. Did I mention it was raining? Gotta love these sensors in the G-Shock range, man. And the GBDH2000, the G-Shock Move. <laughs> comment on the compass they're wonderful and she's pretty accurate and she registers the signal pretty quick I just hope that with the new G-Shock range band they would have changed that from the GBDH 2000 move and made that ultimate accuracy built into the actual compass so you'll understand what I go through the figure eight movement there what I'm talking about oh let me flip the camera around for the compass there you are there's your compass setting I think I'm getting a little wet all right let me push enter Stand by, stand by, please wait. There you go. So that only takes like what, one or two seconds? And then there you go, you have your first readings for the compass. Now, I know north is that way. So you can see the little arrow. I wish it was bigger, larger arrow for north. But anyway, you can see the northern arrow right there on the right side of your screen, just below the three o'clock position. Sorry about the rainwater, but don't worry. We're waterproof till 200 meters. So that's north. Now you see that little figure eight on top of your degrees registered there in the center? Watch what happens when I do a figure eight movement with the watch. Here we go, see if I can get this. Uh. Uh. All right, there you go. So. The direction you're facing is off the top end of the watch of the 12 o'clock for the G-Shock, which means I'm facing that way, right? And the watch is registering that I'm actually facing west-southwest because north is facing the arrow just below the 3 o'clock position. I hopefully get that you understand that. That's clear. And the good thing about it is when you're in the compass setting, it still shows you the time there. It's 1026. I would suggest that sometimes you're going to get better results and or quicker responses to the signal acquisitions outdoors, and that's natural. 
Let's check out the interval timer here. So I will engage it by pressing enter and ready to go. So I have mine set for 10 intervals of 45 minutes for a total of 7 minutes and 30 seconds for my interval timer. Uh, I do 10 exercises and I have 45 seconds to complete 28 reps of those 10 exercises and then it'll reset itself and count down when it gets uh, close to completion. If I do that three sets, that's just over 22 minutes, I guess it is, altogether for a workout, which is fantastic. You can get your heart rate up and away you go. But as you can see below that, the heart rate monitor is also initiated and activated. So right now we're looking at about 80 beats per minute, um, which is kind of normal at kind of your resting heart rate. So Now I have noticed, even when we're outside here, signal acquisition for the GPS for your activity tracker Yes, it does take a few seconds, a few more seconds than that of your actual sensors when they're monitoring the activities and the features for the watch. So just be aware, you may be waiting a few seconds before the signal acquisition is ready to go, but the watch tells you when you're good to go. Now it's been activated for the walking, so I'm just monitoring my walking here and you can see the clock is actually running. So we'll see what happens after a couple minutes of walking, what we're registering here should have distance and and speed and things like that as well so as you can see she's now moving amy's gonna love this she loves to go for walks together so as you can see we're currently distance wise we're 0.13 of a kilometer 14 of a kilometer we've been walking for a minute 52 seconds and my walking pace is 5.3 kilometers an hour so as you can see the walking uh, tracker works just fine uh, for whatever activity or whatever area you want to walk around in, no problem. I also like the option to set the watch face. This is the custom watch face number five. So you can see in my upper half of the dial, I have the steps display. I have sunrise and sunset. I also have the moon face as well as the heart rate in that upper section of the dial, which is fantastic. And yes, they can be set by the app and in the watch settings directly. Let's see if the GPR H1000's uh, heart rate monitor is as accurate as we think. I'm gonna try one of those uh, blood pressure machines there in the uh, pharmacy, see what we got. All right, let's engage the heart rate uh, setting and start monitoring. There we go. Now let's see what we got. of 81. I think you're looking at it as relatively close as far as the accuracy goes. GPR H1000, pretty good. I'm Ross, thanks for coming to the channel. The GPRH 1000, the range man. She's pretty special. I'm in love with it. Appreciate all the support. Like, subscribe, hit that uh, bell or smash that bell. You'll get notified when the next video drops. And you know there's more content coming. That's my time for today. See you on the next one.